Hi everybody, we're back. This is Dave Vellante. I'm with Wikibon.org and I'm here with the Storage Alchemist. I've convinced Steve Keniston to hang out with me a little bit and, uh, and do a little co-hosting, something that he's used to. And uh, this is theCUBE, Silicon Angle's continuous production. We're here live at Edge. We're at the Mandalay Bay Hotel. This is day two. Uh, we've bring, bring, been bringing you wall-to-wall -wall coverage. What we do at these events is we go out we look for the absolute best guests that we can find, the people that are running the businesses, that are interfacing with the customers, the customers themselves, and we try to basically unpack the key issues and present them to you. I'm at D. Vellante. You can tweet me with, with questions. Wilfredo Sotolongo is here. He's the Vice President of Worldwide System X Sales. Wilfredo, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you. Good to meet you. Yeah, nice to meet you too. So Edge, uh, you know, it's doubling in size. We're very excited to have the Cube here. We, we, we were at the inaugural Edge last year in Orlando, and I, I love the fact that, that IBM is sort of bringing together different disciplines, not just a storage show, or not just a server show, or just a software show. You guys are showcasing the, the entire, you know, STG line of business, and, and even bringing in the software capabilities. So I would imagine that's an important part of interactions that you're having with the customers. Today. Well, talk about that a little bit. <clears throat> Absolutely. It turns out, actually, uh, about a year ago, I came into this role, Worldwide System Excel. Before that, I was running the channel. And in that capacity, I was uh, one of the early decision makers of expanding Edge beyond storage to bring into, um, into the marketplace the way our customers are buying, right? Which, while sometimes it is solution specific or product specific, most of the time is more of a a, a cross-brand approach or a cross-technology approach to, to solving their business problems, right? So I feel a little bit of um, personal um, satisfaction to see this event the way it is today. So when you say solution-specific, or, or you, you clarified that to say product-specific, you mean there are customers, of course, that will say, I, just, I want this box you mm -hmm. know, to solve this problem. Give me something that does deduplication, or you know, as an example, mm -hmm. or, or you know, I'm gonna, making up stuff, or give me a server that does, does X mm -hmm. in this price band. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's a lot of buyers there, and certainly your experience of the channel, sometimes that's the mentality of the channel, but, but there's a spectrum there, mm -hmm. right? So that's correct. Talk about that spectrum. Um, both ends, the middle, where you fit, and what you see happening there. Excellent. So, I uh, I've learned over the years here that that as the customers' uh, buying patterns evolve, we need to meet the requirements. And right now, I see four distinct patterns. Uh, <clears throat> on the one extreme, you have the buyer of business outcomes that is looking to automate a process or a or a uh, uh, or a service, if you will who is most interested in, in just you know, reducing AR or improving customer satisfaction, right? On the other extreme, you have the buyer that knows exactly what they want from a technical point of view and wants to come up with the best of breed solution. They're the self-integrator. And as a self-integrator, they want to specify not only the server they want, but how many bits and bytes of this or that, or that processor or that hard drive or that memory DIMM, if you will. <coughs> In between, it's the more interesting categories, at least for me, for my business, um, because we see clients that want flexibility of that self-integrator to whom we're providing reference architectures now. And, and in fact, if you look carefully at our announcements over the last couple of days, you see a plethora of reference architectures built on IBM and on IBM software stacks on SystemX products to allow our clients to more readily and more efficiently deploy solutions, whether it's in cloud or analytics uh, or even high performance computing. That's kind of in between. <clears throat> the next level up, but still below that, that in outcome or business outcome buyer, you got, you got the buyer of integrated offerings. I mean, now and this, is, this is where our recently announced PureFlex family plays right in, right? Uh, it, this is the buyer that is willing to give up a little bit of flexibility, right? Uh, but it's once a, a, a fully configured, fully tested stack solution that provides some database engine capability, some process queuing capability, but it's not all the way to business process outcome. So I see four patterns. On, on, on one extreme, the self-integrator, piece parts buyer. The next one, the reference architecture buyer that wants a, um, some modularity, but still wants flexibility. The next level up, the, uh, the integrated solution buyer who's looking for an entire package of hardware, software, and services that is pre-integrated with some flexibility, but very much still an IT buyer. And finally, 
the business process buyer, if you will, who's looking um, essentially for um, a business analytic engine like our Nintisa offering. Right? Make this pain go away now. Yeah. yeah. All of those are underpinned by a plethora of system X based technologies, right? Whether it's racks, traditional old racks, or towers, or um, our uh, Blade Center family, or our PureFlex family, or even our high performance computing high end systems, right? Mm -hmm you can deploy solutions in all of those different segments. So, so Alfredo, that, that's a great breakdown. So if you, if you take a look at the percentage in each one of those four categories, how have you seen that shift maybe over the last 12 to 24 months? Because that's interesting. Uh, coming from the storage space, I see a lot of those shifts as well. Am I, am I buying to grow? Am I buying to for a new project, a new business outcome project? Am I buying to be fully integrated for a whole new solution? And the mix is slowly starting to shift. I'm curious what you see in this. Yeah, I'd say, um, I'd say four years ago, it was 50-50, uh, meaning maybe even 60, 40. The first two are 60% and the last two are 40%. Maybe maybe even higher, two thirds, one third. Uh, I see it now becoming uh, a lot more balanced. The first two are a third. The third one is a third. And the last one is a third. third. So, um, which is frankly for somebody that comes from the x86 world, like me, is a strange feeling. Because if you know how we came about, we came about from the PC world, right? It's a PC turned on its side that was then, you know, made a little bit more robust, you know, best of breed. You now it's water cooled. <laughs> yeah, now they're water cooled. You got that right. So uh, uh, it's, it's, it's a mind shift for us too, as we develop product and create solutions. So how much flexibility is in that? that reference architecture, how much flexibility is, what's IBM's strategy with regard to flexibility? Because you see some people will have, you know, allow other people's servers. IBM's actually unique in that it will allow other people's storage through SVC. Uh, so, you know, you talked about software, maybe other people allow different networking components. What's IBM's strategy with regard to that reference architecture? <coughs> uh, we are approaching the reference architecture from the customer view uh, in. So, for example, if we're designing a reference architecture uh, for VDI, uh, we start with what are the top VDI solutions in the marketplace, in this case uh, the Citrix and the uh, VMware offerings, and then we look at the next layer under that, okay, what are the most popular um, uh, virtualization engines, and we enable them as well in the reference architectures. Then we look to the next layer and work on, okay, what are the most um, uh, popular storage architectures, and of course we enable ours first, but we also know that some of our competitors have options there, so we enable that as well. And then finally, our own product, in this case, the System X, x86-based server, who runs all of these workloads. So we start from the customer out, uh, customer in, and we work, as you would expect, with the, with the dominant providers, right, in this case, which are you know Microsoft, SAP, um, VMware, Citrix, uh, uh, SaaS, uh, Oracle, Right. Okay, so if the channel says, oh, so System X is why you, you, it's in your title, so that's what you're, you know, the, that, that's locked. But if the, if the channel says, all right, I want to use some other people's storage, you say, okay, we'll it's allow in, that. It, we, we provide that in the reference architecture. It's yeah. not a, it's not a, a restrictive, um, it's not a restrictive architecture. We, 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 we provide cookbooks, if you will, that yeah, yeah. allow you to plug in as appropriate. Are those red books? Is that right or no? Uh, some different. of them are, not all of them are, but some so of Red books has yeah. some sort of I, they do. Right? Yes, they That's, do. Yeah. Uh, okay. Red books are a little deeper. But so, no flexibility around the server, otherwise you don't... You I don't have no business. interest. Right. Um, flexibility around the storage and the major storage architectures mm -hmm. you guys have tested out and, and have validated through the reference architecture. High degrees of flexibility up the software stack. Yes. With the, yes. With the hypervisor and say the VDI, for example, or other industry solutions or applications. Same like on the database it. side, by the way. Okay. If it's a, a database offering, if you will, or integrated offering or yeah. reference architecture. Hey, I don't want to use DB2. Okay, I have an Oracle shop. Okay, great. You guys yeah. will. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we'll support that too. Yeah. Okay. It, that comes from our DNA, right? We are the most heterogeneous hardware server platform in the planet. We have to be that way. We have so, to provide that open approach. So it's interesting, you said one third, one third, one third. I would think that would be that middle, that in between would be the largest business over time. Am I, do you think Not I'm yet. mistaken on that? Not over yet. time. 
or no? You think it's moving in that direction, it is, but okay. it's hard to predict yeah. that it will be that way five years from now. Uh, we've, this is a trend, frankly, that most of us did not expect uh, in the x86 server marketplace. We never thought that clients that prize their independence and their ability to self-integrate so much, because they did, are saying, well, maybe I am okay, you know, having a few restrictions here and there. It's very odd. Uh, it may be strange for you to hear what I'm saying, but for us that live in this no, I'm world, it's very in odd. Your point of view there, and 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 uh, I would imagine the channel is driving a lot of these decisions as well. They right? are. Yeah. They are. And 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 to be honest, the channel loves that approach, right? It's right. Flexibility. Right. Of course. And yeah. uh, it gives them choice and, yes. and opportunity. They're going to go where the margin is, right? Yeah. So. Yeah. And and I, bet, I bet the software drives a little bit of that too, right? So <laughs> we we see it with clients that as they start thinking about their architecture and their infrastructure and, and they do want to build their own, they're like, well, nobody likes the commodity word, right? But if I can, if I can then pick some of the things that I want in my business where I want to sacrifice some financial savings, but then pick software that can help manage or help grow or help, you know, all of those things, Maybe that's how I want to build my architecture. Maybe it's not about the hardware. So I, I, I would agree. We, we see a lot of that, too, as folks trying to decide how they're going to build their architecture and take a lot of pride in, no, I, I want to build it, you know? Yeah. Well, it depends. You know, if you think about the entire stack of the solution, they, they all want to cut uh, at different places where they do the self-integration, right? Yep. Uh, the left-hand side guy cuts it as the lowest point they can. The right-hand side guy cuts it at the highest point they can. That's the, that's the bottom line. And, and in the in in the non x86 world, that it, that was commonplace. In the x86 world, it's new. It's emerged over the last two two years. Last two years, okay. Yeah. And by the way, it's mostly a trend in the major markets. It's not yet a trend in the growth markets. Um, because of of uh, uh, skill sets or maturity, or will that change? <coughs> I think it's primarily skill sets uh -huh. uh, of the clients themselves right. and the partners, and as well as right. the IBMers. And I would bet also in a lot of those major markets, you have uh, customers that that maybe have their own homegrown software, mm -hmm. so they probably think a little bit more about. Now nah, I know what I need for hardware. Mm -hmm. I, I I can build that before because I wanted to to mirror something that I'm building with my software versus. No, any, any type of hardware can work for me in this particular solution, right. like right. an Oracle solution, right. right? And many times, the most sophisticated implementations are in the major markets in terms of complexity, technical complexity. Right. Are there, uh, so you, you, clearly the emerging markets, you're saying it's not as fast as an uptake, but, but as far as differences between, say, you know, North America, Europe, the, the, the larger, you know, parts of the, the world in AP. I don't see much of a difference. Pretty much homogeneous, right? Yeah. In terms of skill sets and, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. And how about industry? Is there any nuance by industry? Or oh, clearly there is nuances by industry. Well, uh, I mean, in terms of their uptake of this type of approach. Yeah, there's yeah. clear. Media industry is on the left hand side, yeah. extreme left hand side. Okay. Yeah. Um, you can think of a few names that are definitely there, right. uh, and uh, and you can think, uh, for example, retailers uh, or CPG companies. They're more on the right hand side. Drop it in. Yeah, I don't give it any any color as long as it's yeah, black. Yeah, it's fine. It with works, me. right? Uh, I I mean I'm a retailer. I'm not an IT guy. I don't want to do the non-differentiated heavy lifting. Yeah. The media so, guy is actually willing to do that. Uh, well, the media guys are the ones that kind of push that agenda yeah. big time over the last few years, right? right. So right, because it's competitive advantage for, for them. them. Yes, yes. So yeah, there's some that. clear differentiation across some industries. So we got to play across all four models. We got to play across all software stacks. We got to play across all the industries, and offer our customers choice, and offer our customers, our partners, the ability to meet those choices. So let's talk some more about the channel. You've spent some time in the channel, and you know what, what floats their boat. And uh, there's been a real land grab for the channel play, uh, amongst the large IT players. Uh, some have it right, some did, haven't had it right, some are sort of adjusting. Um, talk about IBM's position in the channel, what your message is to the key channel partners. Um, <clears throat> first, your first one about land grab, it, it's an interesting, it's just, the channel is a local business. The channel is not a global business. Uh, some of our distributors are global firms, but they still operate locally. So uh, to the point of land grab, the land grab is going on in the United States of America, nowhere else. Mm. Um, 
uh, which is which is interesting. It's a unique it is challenge interesting, yeah, okay. to this country. So that's unique to to the United States, maybe even North America. North America, a bit? yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, primarily, but it's uh, not happening in in Europe, AP, uh, the, not, to the same to, extent. Not, to, not even close. Uh, uh, not even close. You and your competitors aren't buying channel <coughs> partners the way you are in, in the uh, U.S. Right uh, okay. now, I would tell you that. Um, the marketplace is substantially different in terms of route to market in North America versus the rest of the world. In the rest of the world, um, because of um, regulatory or tax or local laws, um, there is a high dependency on the channel. So in spite uh, of the fact that the channel is not as mature, uh, they are a critical um, component and they've been stable and they're just developing skill moving up the stack in terms of their ability to satisfy clients and solutions, right? In the U.S., the channel is very mature, very developed, and it is a true, you know, war for talent within them and between the audience, yeah, yeah, right. right? It's a true yeah, yeah. war for talent, where we have a challenge, right? We've been working, particularly in this country, um, to tell the channel, number one, uh, we're committed uh, to you in terms of giving you best of breed offerings because we know that's number one in their list. You have to have the best of breed value proposition. They the want client. the hot product, don't they? Yes, yeah. yeah, that's number one. Always been number one. It would always continue to be number one. So we got to do that. Second, second, we want you to make the most money. So the financial value proposition has to be there. And, and they think, it. in their minds, those are related, and they probably are, right? Well, you, if you don't have the first one, you will never have the second right. one. You could have the first one, but not the second yeah, one. Yeah, 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 right. So, uh, you got to have the second one. Okay. And then third, you want to have uh, uh, an OEM that is there to support you throughout the whole selling cycle. And that's, frankly, the part that we've had to work the most on uh, in this geography. So, I think it goes beyond the selling cycle, right through, well, at least when I talk to our partners, support is also a big deal for them too, right? Yeah, I'm, my, my selling cycle includes post post, post, post sales, support. right? Yeah, the whole thing. So um, so it's, it's interesting. There is no generalization. You I know we have a, a U.S. mentality in this conference or a North American mentality, but uh, being a global guy, I see more and I can tell you it's different. I used to run a global business. I'd parachute in thinking I knew everything and then learn quickly. No, yeah, you didn't. <laughs> that wasn't the case. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't understand a lot about local markets, but uh, but you're right. The channel, the channel and services generally are, 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 are localized, which is why it's always been so impressive that IBM's done so well in services. It's such a local market. Yeah. Um, okay, so you mentioned that support is one of those areas where you guys are really putting a lot of emphasis and a lot of effort. Mm -hmm. um, uh, area of improvement. What, what are you doing there specifically? So, <clears throat> probably the most important element there is just bringing leads. You know, it's as simple as that sounds. We haven't done enough of, 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 of that, if you will, in, um, in the recent past. And we need to bring in more leads. Uh, because in the end, that's, that's where everything starts. Um, and, and to do that, uh, for example, in my particular brand, uh, we hired 50 people here in, in the U.S. Uh, in the last six months to dedicate them to the channel in terms of calling on clients, using the A-Bar logo and opening doors for them in order to bring them leads. Um, uh, same thing in terms of uh, our telemarketing engine, right? We have had a telemarketing engine. It has brought them leads, but they have not been as well qualified as they need to be. So we're doing a better job now in terms of nurturing those leads so that when we do pass them, they're really good leads. So the IBMer goes in, cultivates the relationship, you know, takes the client golfing, whatever it is, uh, and, and brings the channel partner in with them. You make it comp neutral, obviously. That's right. So right. We need, we, we're doing that more than we had in the past. Right. I mean, that's critical, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, so those are two examples. The last one I'll mention is a lot of the back office, right? Uh, in the end, one way that the partner makes money is by having a very light and simple back office in terms of their business. So a, l a lot of automation, a lot of tools, a lot of capabilities to simplify the back office process for our partners so that, in fact, they can um, you know, bring some more money to the bottom line. And how about the initial engagement? I mean, in terms of the way you engage, a lot of times people complain, and this is not necessarily specific to IBM, but I know with a lot of big companies, it's complicated to sign a deal a channel you know relationship with with a large company 
Uh, has that been a problem historically, and have you sim simplified that in any way? Uh, not as much for us. Yeah. Uh, our problem has been more on the back end, yeah, okay. the front end. So it's not hard to, to, to if you're qualified to, and to, to get in. To, no, to get in. No. 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 It's actually quite easy, to yeah. be honest. Okay. And I mean, I've seen some of those agreements. I've not seen IBM's, but I've seen some of your competitors, and they're like this. And, yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. you just say, oh, "Well, I'll yeah. get to that someday." Yeah. 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 No, um, I I don't have that issue as much. So. All right, good. Well, listen, we're out of time, Alfredo. Thanks very much for coming on the cube. Thanks, Steve, for sitting in for uh, for Stu and. Uh, Great discussion. Really appreciate your time. All right. Thank you. Good to All meet right. you. Thanks. Nice to meet you. Keep it right there, everybody. We'll be right back with our next guest, Inhi Cho Sa, is coming on. And uh, this is The Cube. We'll be right back. All right.